Pranav runs a luxury car dealership selling cars from four different brands. After a successful summer sales event, he has remaining six cars from brand one, seven from brand two, 12 cars from brand three, and 18 cars from brand four. Approximately what percent of cars are from brand two? Okay, so from brand two, if we want to calculate what percent or what proportion of cars are from brand two, we can treat it like a probability problem. So what's the probability of randomly selecting a car in the lot and having that car be from brand two? So the probability of brand two, the way you calculate that is you have a fraction. The numerator of the fraction is going to be the number of desired outcomes. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be seven cars. That's we want to choose one of those seven. The denominator is going to be the number of total outcomes, which is, and that's essentially just the sum of six, seven, 12, and 18. Okay, that comes out to seven over 43. And if you calculate that, you end up getting 0 0.16 going on. In a ball pit, 75% of the balls are yellow in color. If you randomly pick a ball from the ball pit, what is the probability death of the ball? Picked is not one of the yellow balls. So it's saying, if there's 100 balls in the pit, 75 is yellow. If you randomly pick a ball from the ball pit, what is the probability that the ball picked is not one of the yellow balls? So if if 20, 75 out of the 100 are yellow, that means that 25 out of 100 are not yellow. Okay, so now we just have to find a fraction that's equal to 25 out of 100. Well, you can just do the, you know, reduction. You, you know, if you know that 25 out of 100 is a quarter, then you'll know that that's the answer. If you're not sure, just plug this in your calculator, you get 0 0.25, and then find what's the decimal equivalent of each of these. You'll find that the only one that's equal to 0 0.25 is A. Okay, so you can cheat through this one a little if you're not sure how to reduce the fraction, which is totally okay. <clears throat> a bag contains 10 blue dots, 6 green dots, 8 teal dots, and 4 red dots. How many red dots must be added to the bag so that the probability of randomly picking a red dot is 1 over 3? What's currently the probability of picking a red one? Let's just plug it in to the probability formula. So it's, what's the probability formula? The probability of anything x is equal to number of desired outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. So what are the number of desired outcomes if we uh, just, you know, as it sits right now? So uh, how many red do we have? 4. And what's the total? 10 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4. This gives you um, 16 plus 8 plus 4. So we have 4 over 28, which is equal to 1 out of 7. Okay, we want to increase that to 1 out of 3. So what you can do is just take that probability, probability new red is equal to, we want it to be 1 out of 3, right? And we're going to do that by, we're going to add essentially things to the bag. So if I add one to the bag, let's say this is your original set, and then I added, I know the colors don't match, but let's say I added a blue one. I added a blue one here, but I also added a blue one to the denominator, right? So I'm going to keep adding those until I get the probability that I want. Initially, this is going to be still close to one over seven, then maybe it'll get bigger, it'll get to two over seven. Um, but it's, it, we, we want to do this, and we don't want to just keep plugging and chugging, that takes too long. What you can just do is plug in x and then solve for it. So you find what value of x is needed to give me the desired probability. How many do I have to add to the bag in order to get the probability I want? So you're going to add some number, you don't know what it is, but uh, that's really how you solve it. So let's just solve this. How do we solve this equation now? You can just do cross multiply divide, so 4 plus x times 3. Is equal to 10 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4 plus x. This is the same as 12 plus 3x is equal to all these numbers 28 plus x. Uh, I can subtract x on both sides, subtract 12 on both sides, and then I get 2x is equal to 16 divided by 2, x is equal to 8. So once you add 8 red ones, you will end up with a probability of 1 over 3. Only trout, bass, and pike fish are in Great Lake Pond. The ratio of trout to the total amount of fish in the pond is this, and the ratio of bass to the total amount of fish is this. If a fisherman catches a single fish at random, what type of fish it is it most likely to be? Okay. So first, uh, let's just find the percentage that each one makes up. So there's three types of fish. One, two, three. If we know the percentage, we know the percentage random chance of getting it. So, um, Trout is 64 over 195. That's 32.8%. Um, bass 
is 22 to 65, 33.8. Uh, and then the other one, let's just, it's, the way the problem is set up, um, I guess the way it's worded, you're not really sure if the pike is the is taking up the rest of the percentage. So if I do 1 minus 32.8 minus 33.8, you end up putting 33.4. So either... Without that assumption, you're going to end up with E, but if, if you do make the assumption, it's, you're, it's going to be B. To make an inner piece jig, uh, puzzle more challenging, a puzzle company includes 10 extra pieces in the box along with the 800 pieces, and those 10 extra pieces do not fit anywhere. If you buy such a box puzzle and break the seal and immediately select two pieces at random, replacing the piece after picking the first, what is the probability that at least one of them will be one of the extra pieces? So the probability of anything is going to be the number of desired outcomes by the number of total. So what's the number of desired outcomes? We want to pick out of these 10 extra pieces, right? 10 outcomes divided by what's the total? It's 800 pieces plus 10 extra pieces. So 800 plus 10. That's going to give you 10 over 810. So what's the probability that at least one of them will be one of the extra pieces? Um, so this is the probability of having it happen once, but having it happen at least once when you're choosing twice, uh, maybe you'll just double this. Yeah, I believe you double it. You do the probability of event one plus the probability of getting it on the second time or essentially just double the probability. So it ended up being, um, this is actually 0 0.012345. If you multiply by two, you end up getting 0 0.02 Four six nine, which you can round up to 0 0.025. Josephine plays a game where she rolls a six-sided dice and gets points for the corresponding outcome. A roll of one results in one point, and so on. What is the expected number of points she should have after 90 rolls of the dice? So you have to think, for a very large number of rolls, what's the average that you would expect? Well, if I roll six times, I would expect to get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, right? If I take the average of all of these, the average is just equal to the sum divided by 6, or the, essentially the number of values. So that's going to be whatever 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is, 21, divided by 6. 7 over 2, which is 3.5. Okay? You expect this on any given roll. Now we need to multiply this by 90. 90 times 3.5 is 50, uh, 315. So that's your answer. If you roll 90 times, you should get a sum of 315. Theoretically, how many times would you have to roll to earn 450? Okay, so based on this problem, we know that the average roll is 3.5 per roll. So let me let me just write it like this. Points per roll, okay? Now, if uh, I wanna earn 450 points, I need to find how many rolls I can just divide 450 by 3.5 because I know I'm getting each roll to be 3.5. So uh, 450 points per roll divided by, sorry, 450 points divided by 3.5 points per roll. I end up getting 450 divided by Uh, 128.57. Okay. So this ends up, we end up in this weird scenario. Like, is it 128 or 129? Obviously, we could just round up. Uh, and I believe rounding up does get us the right answer. But conceptually, what does this mean? If you roll 128 times, and you, you'll notice that that is less than the required value. So 128 times 3.5 is 448. Okay. This is not the same thing as 450. If we want at least 450 points, we have to do another roll, which means we have to add uh, this to, you know, make it 3.5, sorry, 129. And that means we would be at 451.5 or something like that. On a 10 question test, a student has a one quarter chance to guess any question correctly. Okay. Which of the following is the probability that the student guesses and scores zero? Um, so, if you have a one out of four chance of getting it right, that means you have a three out of four chance of getting any given question wrong. 
Okay. Now, none of the answer options here are equal to one out of four or three over four as a percent. So why is that the case? What you're gonna have to do here is not just find a fraction, but you're gonna have to take your fraction probability of three over four or one over four and raise it to a power. That's because here you're dealing with essentially compound probability. Uh, when there's a variety of events or independent events and you wanna find the probability of all those events happening together, in this case, 10 questions being answered incorrectly together, you have to multiply the probability by itself that number of times, okay? So you have your probability of getting a question wrong. You need to raise that to the 10th power because this has to happen 10 times. And whatever this value is, that's your answer. So take 0.75, raise it to the 10th, and you end up getting uh, about 5.6%. So there's a if you take a 10 question quiz and you're thinking worst case scenario, if I, what's the probability that I get everything wrong? It's about one out of 20, which is, uh, strikingly high, you know, it's kind of alarming, which is why you should study. Um, but that's how you do this type of problem. If on the other hand, they asked you if, uh, what's the probability of getting all the questions right, it would be this, and that's a much smaller probability. So if you look at that, one over four to the 10th, that is uh, 0.0000000936. Compare that to 0 0.056. This is like six magnitudes or five magnitudes smaller, okay? So it's much easier to get everything wrong than, than to get everything right. Jasmine is taking a five question multiple choice quiz. Each question has four answer options. What's the probability she answers none of the questions correctly? Okay, so the probability of getting uh, a question right is one out of four. Probability of getting it wrong is three out of four. So if you wanna find the probability of getting 10 questions wrong, it's effectively the same as the probability of getting one question wrong times um, itself 10 times over. So it's just that probability to the 10th power. Okay, so you're going to raise the probability to the 10th power. This is what you do when you have a single probability and you want to find the probability of that event happening multiple times. Okay, so the probability of getting something wrong, 3 over 4, we're going to raise that to the 10th, okay? Uh, and if you do that on your calculator, you'll get a value that is close to 0 0.056. Um, sorry, this is not to the 10th, this is to the 5th. There's five questions, not 10. <laughs> okay, so 5, 5. 0.75 to the 5th. So it's 0 0.0237. There's a 23.7% chance that you're going to get any given question wrong or, or all five of these questions wrong on your test, okay? Which is corresponding to answer option A.